Many of our, our people in the, in the far north tell the same legend uh, to our people. But it sounds so much better in Dene than when it's uh, translating it. But this is the way the legend goes. It was winter and many native people were camped together. One evening they heard a little baby crying by the lake shore. Some young girls ran to look for the baby. But as they came closer to the spot, the crying stopped. This happened three times. The fourth time, an old lady came to see what was the matter. She walked around trying to find out where the sound was coming from. It seemed to come from in front of her, but she could see nothing but deer droppings. When she gathered them, she saw a baby which was only about the inch, a few inches. Like he said, you know your thumb glove? That was the size of this baby. She picked him up and put her him in her mitt and went back to camp. The old lady had several sons, but she decided to raise this little boy as well and call him Betsune Yanesha. One day her sons went hunting. When they returned, Betsune Yanesha asked his grandmother for the front feet of the smallest deer that his uncles had killed. The boy was given the feet to eat and he was so happy. After several, another successful hunt, the boy once again asked for the front teeth of the smallest deer. The hunters would not give him to him for he they wanted the rest of their feet for their own children. And he was offered another part. When the grandmother returned with, without the feet, Betsune Yanesha was very angry. And you see how angry he is here. Yeah. <coughs> what did they tell you? Betsune Yanesha asked his grandma. His grandmother replied, they said you were not the only child in the camp who wanted them. This time, you have to have another part of that deer. But Sunay Yanesha, just because, says, just because I'm small, they have insulted me. Now I will starve them. When the people heard this, they became very angry. We will see if that boy can make us starve, they said. The next day, they moved away, leaving Betsune Yanesha and her the grandma all by themselves. Betsune Yanesha told his grandmother to cut some small branches and put them in the fireplace for abundance of each of the abandoned lodge. When they had completed the hunt, she was to tell him. A little later, the grandmother came to him and said, the branches in your uncle's lodges have burned in the shape of deer hoofs. In all the other lodges, the remains are round little stones. This means that my uncle shall always have deer, but the others will only find stones and they will soon die. <laughs> the grandmother was so also afraid of starving 
But today, Anesha saw this, and he says to his grandmother, as long as I can be with you, we will never starve. She lifted them on, on her back, and they set off to search of food. By the middle of the day, they came to a small, muddy lake. Stop here and fish, but Sunayanesha told his grandma. <clears throat> his grandma said, here in this mud? Why, there's nothing but worms in this swamp, his grandmother said. She lowered the fish hook into the water, and a large jackfish came up. But it didn't bite, but Tsuneyanesh shot said, lower the hook again, Grandma. She did, and so caught another black trout. That's good, he said. Now let's build a lodge. We will camp here and prepare the fire for a, make some dry fish. She did. The boy went, and the grandmother began to cry, and she was all alone. Then she heard a little noise out there from the lodge. In came Betsunea Nesha, all covered with ice. Why are you crying, Grandma? Betsunea Nesha says to his grandma. I was afraid that you left me too. Grandma, as long as I'm here, we will never starve and I will never leave you. He told her to take off his belt. Inside his coat, she found many deer tongue kips. He had killed the deer by biting off their tongue. What looked like ice covering him was foam from the mouths. Remember that Tsuneyanesha was just very, very little. And that was the only way he could kill. The next morning, he says, she says, he says to his grandma, let's, wait, let's go where I had killed the deer. The first one we see, you will dry and pound for me. Gather the grease, but don't eat any yourself yet, Grandma. They set off and soon came to a lake. There on the ice lay the deer. The grandmother got busy setting up the lodge, preparing for, to prepare the meat. The boy went away to look for his uncles. He found their lodges on the other side of the lake. The two uncles sat fishing. There was no other people there. <coughs> Only the families that his uncles had left. Betsunei Nesha hit himself, took off his new shoes, turned into a deer. Then he walked out there where the hooks lay in the water. He pawed the ice softly and then the uncles saw this and said, that's strange. That little deer is playing with our hooks. <laughs> Say, said one of the uncles, do you remember that queer little boy our mother had? Maybe it's a medicine man and he turned himself into a deer. And now he's here to laugh at us. Let's track him. When they looked up and saw the small deer had disappeared, they followed his trail into a patch of pine trees. There the track stopped and the snow shoe marks on the snow. Following, he came across the lake where they saw the spruce lodge. Then they found their mother, Betsunei Nesha, and Betsunei Nesha. They also saw the piles of meat and fat. Soon after the arrival of the sons, the old lady, the mother, felt sick and she passed away. 
but Tsunaya Nashon turned into a deer again and disappeared. So you see, no matter how small you are, that you think you are, you can do just about anything in life. So there's a lesson in everything that the legends tell us. Legends teach us a lesson. Stories have an ending. When you tell about Cinderella, there's always an ending, huh? You went off with the prince and lived happily ever after. But legends, they tell you a lesson of the things in life itself. So, Marcy Cho, who are listening to me.